Hi there, I'm Danny Flexen and welcome to Seconds Out Reflections. Every Monday we're here at 4.30pm to take a look back at the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And obviously the huge fight that took place on Saturday night in Las Vegas was Canelo Alvarez stepping up from middleweight, hoping to become, in our view, a three-weight world champion, in some people's view a four-weight world champion, depending on how you view the WBA secondary title that he won at super middle. But he stepped up to light heavyweight, for the first time, fought Sergei Kovalev, reigning champion, WBO champion at the weight. And for a large part of the fight, it looked like Canelo was going to lose. Um, although, let's deal with the scorecard controversy first of all. It came out after the fight. fight ended in the 11th round. It came out that up until that point, Canelo was ahead marginally on two cards and drawing on the third. The vast majority of people who watched the fight took issue with that. And, and I... I kind of understand it because there was a lot of close rounds where not much was happening early on and I can see why some of those might have edged towards Canelo who was often coming forward um, but I did have Kovalev in a healthy lead um, although the momentum was certainly with Canelo at the point when he managed to stop Kovalev in the 11th round. Really great finish kind of overshadowed everything that had come before it which really was more of a chess match than this kind of exciting spectacle that I guess we were hoping for. By no means a bad fight, compelling, couldn't take your eyes off it, but there wasn't a host of kind of amazing exchanges that kept you on the edge of your seat. Kovalev dictated large portions of the fight with his lateral movement and his excellent jab. Um, Canelo struggled at times to get past it, and his output wasn't, you know, he always fights in spurts, but even for Canelo, his output was pretty poor at times. He finally started to come into things in the middle rounds, um, cut the ring off a bit better and just mixed up his shots a lot more as well and um, became less predictable. The momentum was with him as it moved into the 11th round and I felt Kovlev, as I said, was in a decent lead. Um, but you could tell he was tiring. The Canelo put so much pressure on him throughout the fight, even the rounds he was losing with his feet. So he cut the ring off, forcing Kovalev to throw and to move when really he didn't want to. It was a pace that Canelo was comfortable with because his footwork's quite subtle. He doesn't do grand movements to cut the ring off. So he wasn't expending a lot of energy, but he was forcing Kovalev to work and to move. Um, and that paid dividends in the 11th round when he forced him to the ropes, um, caught him with a left hook behind the glove. Great shot. Uh, made Kovalev's legs do a bit of a funny dance as he kind of moved to his own left. And Canelo targeted um, and landed the right hand follow-up at exactly the right time caught him flush, knocked him down against the ropes, and you could tell almost immediately that he wasn't going to be getting up, and the referees, his credit, saw that too, and waved the fight off. Valiant effort from Kovalev afterwards, he suggested that the fight had come too soon after his previous fight, a pretty gruelling one um, against Anthony Yard. Uh, it was only 11 weeks between the two um, fight nights, and he suggested he didn't have enough time to recover and to have a, a proper training camp afterwards, and that's why he tired. He said he got tired from around the 6th. Um, and he certainly did get tired from round of six, but I think a lot of that had to do with the pressure Canelo was putting on, as I say, with his feints and with his feet, as much as it did. But we'll never know just how much of an effect the abbreviated time frame had on Kovalev. What we do know is that he had to take the fight or he'd lose out on the biggest payday of his career, around $12 million it's been estimated, um, because Canelo only wanted to fight on that date and Kovalev had to fulfil his mandatory obligation against Anthony Yard first. So he didn't have much of a chance. What I should address as well is the rehydration issue that a lot of people have been talking about, that Kovalev could only weigh 10 pounds more on a second weigh-in that they had a fight, 10 pounds more than he had weighed at the first weigh-in where he had to come back um, and weigh in again after he slightly failed to make weight the first time. I don't think it has as much an effect as people say. that People get really annoyed with Canelo about putting these rehydration clauses in, which I do understand. But in Kovalev's case, he very rarely put on more than five pounds in recent years between uh, the weigh-in and fight morning or fight day anyway. So I don't think the rehydration clause would have had that much of an effect. He suggested, obviously, that the fight came quite soon after his previous fight did have an effect. And that's for him to know and, and other people to judge, I guess. But we can't underestimate what Canelo did. You know, I didn't see him stopping Kovalev. I thought he'd win on points. He was behind in the fight for me and for a lot of observers, but not for the judges, although Canelo may not have known that. And he came out, pushed the pressure, really got to him. And, and when he needed those crucial shots to get a much bigger man, let's not forget, out of there, he found them. And he was clinical in doing so. Um, I already had him as my number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world before this. So I based pound-for-pound -pound not on 
ability or potential but on performances and results. And Canelo is, for me, a three-weight world champion. He's beaten some of the finest fighters of his era, whether you think they're controversial victories or he shouldn't have got the nod is by the by. You know, he, the record books say that he won those fights. And he is peerless currently at middleweight. Light heavyweight, we don't know if he's going to stay there. It'll be interesting to see what he does next. I think he may drop back down either to middle or super middle. I'd quite like to see him at super middle against Callum Smith. I think that's an easy fight to make and a great one to watch. Um, but I'd really like to hear from you guys what you thought of Canelo's performance in the comment section below and Kovalev's, obviously. And also what you feel Canelo should do next, which weight he should fight at and who he should fight at. Before I go, just a quick mention of Anthony Crollo, obviously bowed out of boxing after a contentious points win over Frank Urquiaga in Manchester on Saturday night. Regardless of whether you felt Crollo won the fight, and the vast majority of people don't, he's still been an outstanding servant to British boxing and given us so many great nights and an exciting fights, so a real warrior. And I've listed his five most memorable nights on secondsout.com at the moment. You should have a look, but it could easily have been 10. So good luck, Anthony, in whatever you choose to do. And also a little shout out to MTK Global who put on the show at Maidstone Leisure Centre yesterday, which I attended, which is just down the road from where I live. Danny Carr um, edged out Lewis Adams for the vacant Southern Area Super Featherweight title in an excellent main event. Really, really exciting fight to watch. Um, I think it's probably available to watch now on Hate to um, Boost a, a competitor, but IFL TV, got to be honest, it's a, a really good fight and I suggest you watch it. So yeah, let us know what you think about Canelo's future and uh, also the performance against Kovalev. I'll be back next week, Monday, 4.30pm for the next Reflections. And I'll also be here this Thursday, 4.30pm, for Flex Expectations when I'll be looking ahead, at least in part, to KSI against Logan Paul 2. And I'm really not sure what I'm going to say about that, but we've got three days to think about it. So thank God for that. Thanks for your time, as always, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.